ZenWatch Manager ensures your ZenWatch 2 and your smartphone work together seamlessly. Here's how. In addition to helping you switch watch faces quickly, ZenWatch Manager makes it easy to organize ZenWatch 2 applications. Just tap Apps on the home screen and you get an overview of the apps you've downloaded, along with some recommended by ASUS. Now let's go to the Tools page, where you can fine-tune the ZenWatch 2 user experience. Tap on Watch Face Settings to adjust the amount of time before screen dimming activates, or set up how often you'd like weather updates. Now look for Phone Helper on the Tools page. In this app, you can quickly access several helpful utilities. You can also launch Phone Helper on the ZenWatch 2. Let's find out more about it. By enabling Remote Call Control, you can handle incoming calls on your phone with ease, right from your ZenWatch. You can also quickly switch your phone into speaker mode for hands-free calls. For missed calls, slide the pop-up notification to the left. Then choose to either return the call right away, call back later, or reply it by message. ZenWatch 2 can block interruptions from incoming phone calls or alarms. Activate the Cover to Mute feature by covering your watch with your hand to dismiss a call or snooze the alarm. Find My Watch makes it easy to find a misplaced ZenWatch 2. Gently press Find My Watch, and the watch will vibrate so you can locate it by sound. It's an inconvenience, to say the least, when you forget to take your phone when you go out. With the Forget Phone Warning feature, you can receive alerts on your watch when you're too far away from your phone. The Zen Watch 2 is great with security as well. By enabling Unlock My Phone, the Zen Watch 2 identifies you to your phone. If you're wearing the Zen Watch and your phone is nearby, your phone will stay unlocked. But once the Zen Watch 2 and your phone are too far separated, the security lock will become active again. In addition to Phone Helper, you can also take advantage of Business Helper. In the call log, green indicates outgoing calls, red is for missed calls, and blue identifies incoming calls that you've answered. Bold text labels help you quickly pick out unread email. The Zen Watch Manager app gives your smart wearable a human touch. With it, your Zen Watch 2 is now more personal and smarter than ever before. Inside of every Stark Watch is a smart module that connects to both iOS and Android devices. To sync data, pull down on the app. From here, you can see your progress towards step goals, distance, and calories burned. Click on your current steps to view your days, weeks, and months progress. To go back, hit the little back arrow in the upper left-hand corner of your screen. From here, if you swipe left, you will see your sleep data. If you click on your hours of sleep, you can view your days, weeks, and months progress. If you click the jogging icon in the upper right hand corner, you can record your runs by tracking your distance, time, speed, steps, calories burned, and run routes. Click the data sharing icon in the upper right hand corner, and you can share this information on social media or just share it with your friends. You can also share your step and sleep data. Click the settings icon in the upper left hand corner of the screen and you can turn alerts on and off, such as calls, SMS, inactivity reminder, and alarms. From here you can also locate your device by activating its alarm, and by opening the app's camera function you can remotely take photos by shaking your watch.
bought the original G-Watch from LG, it's safe to say you're probably not going to like what's coming next. Less than four months since the company's first Android Wear device is back with another much better one. So what are LG's early adopters being taunted with? It's the LG G-Watch R. R for round. Unlike the original G-Watch that was fairly drab with a square face and generic rubber strap, the G-Watch R looks much more, well, like a watch. Not least because of that full circular display that LG has been so keen to taunt Motorola and its flat tire 360 with. Surrounding the watch face are markings just like you find on a regular diver's watch and the home button is placed on the side to look like a crown. A leather strap completes the traditional look and we have to say it all comes together to create the least, well, dorky Android Wear device so far. You might prefer the Moto 360 if you have more contemporary tastes but either way, things are looking up on the design front for smartwatches. One caveat, all of these watches are still very masculine looking. Aesthetics aside, the rest of the G-Watch R is very similar to its predecessor. It's still got a 1.2 GHz dual core chip and the same 512 megs of RAM and 4 GB of internal storage. The battery size gets a very small boost, but the real world battery life actually seems much improved. In our testing, we got easily two days moderate use out of it a decent improvement over the original. One last hardware improvement is the inclusion of a heart rate monitor. This beefs up the G-Watch R's fitness credentials when combined with the step counter and stopwatch from before. As with all wear devices, the G-Watch R is certified IP67 water resistant, which means it'll happily take a shower with you if, you know, you want it. While there might not be a lot going on with the G-Watch R that you can't find in one of the other Android wear devices, LG's brought all of the best bits together into one good looking piece of kit. The battery life is still way off what most people will tolerate, but it's getting there. The looks are taste depending, a definite step forward, and everything else, i.e. the software, is really up for Google to take the lead with. The bottom line is, the LG G Watch R is staking a claim to the Moto 360's crown as best Android Wear watch. But we'd still like to see either some innovative features or less masculine designs for future offerings. Head to Engadget.com for our full review. Owners of the original G-Watch can stop looking away now. When I started social media, I was posting these videos on Instagram. My friends were ringing me up going, you're boring, what are you doing? Get back to doing your boot camp. No one's listening to you, you're winding me up. And if I had listened to them and carried on, I would have been running my boot camp right now. I wouldn't have a company with 50 people. I wouldn't have transformed 70,000 people's lives. I'm Joe X, The Body Coach. Welcome back to The Body Coach TV. I'm going to go for a little hit session. We're going to do some high intensity interval training. I like to film YouTube workouts for my followers. One of my favourite tiles in the band is the workout function because I can track my heart rate, which is really important. We want to get our heart rate to near maximum. Come on. My heart rate's on 145. Beats per minute, I'm happy with that. I started my career as a personal trainer. I was running boot camps and I was a PT, which I loved. I was busy, you know, I was running around like 5.30 a.m. in the morning until like 9 p.m. at night every day for like two years. Like, I really worked hard. And then I started doing boot camps and I was like, this is great, but there's just, there's just, there's eventually you're going to burn out and you can only reach a certain amount of people a week. So I thought, how can I reach more people? And I was turned to social media, set up a Twitter account and was posting like, kind of photos and motivational stuff. And then once Instagram opened up video, that was my chance to really like get my personality across. And I did the 15 second videos and it's just gone crazy. Like half a million followers follow me on Instagram, which is which is mad because I never intended to it for it to be like that. It was just more like share some ideas, have a bit of fun, see what happens. It's lunchtime in house, eating well and being healthy. It isn't as hard as you think. It's just about buying healthy, look, real ingredients, real food, you know, that it's not processed. It's got one single ingredient. Monge too, Rodney. Bosh. And that right there is lean in 15. So I probably sleep about seven or eight hours a night, but sometimes it's broken, you know. So this really cool tire where it measures your sleep patterns. You need a good night's sleep to train hard and you need to fuel your body. So for me, like heart rate, sleep and, and your and your calories and training is all so interlinked. Now I'm just like wanna get on TV and the cookbooks and just magnify what I'm doing and amplify it around the world because people just need to know that they can all get they can all get healthy, they can get lean, you don't have to starve yourself. Bosh! With the band, I love that I can measure my heart rate and you know if I go out for a run, it's just a nicer way of tracking things and seeing your progress. I've had my lunch, I've done all my emails, I'm gonna go for a little 5k run. Yeah.
Hey, it's Josh Vigar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And here I am with the Samsung Gear Live. Now, we're going to give you your first look on here. Just like with the Moto 360, we are looking at devices that are currently in demo mode, and that means we won't be able to get a great look at the operating system. We will get a look at some of the basic functionality, some of the things that they obviously want to be able to show us. But uh, for the most part, I figured, you know what? We're going to have the, uh, the, the, the LG G Watch tomorrow when I get my hands on it. So I might as well show you an in-depth look at the operating system on Android Wear when I get that. But but uh, before we even get into the operating system, here is the actual device itself. Now, one thing I do love about this is it does have the look of a Gear 2 Neo, uh, or rather a Gear Neo, but it does uh, retain a look that is very much like the Gear, yet has the clasp, or rather the band, of the Samsung Gear Fit. And I think that's a great idea. Uh, the Gear Fit had a very, very uh, easy to use clasp system that is right here. And you'll be able to easily just sort of put it on by doing that right there. Um, and we don't have a camera on here. Again, this is more like the Neo than the Gear 2. We do have a button on the side that will go straight to the watch faces and whatnot, and everything will be there. So I'm pressing it right now. And of course, if you look on the back right there, we have a heart rate monitor. Now, the heart rate monitor is something that you're going to see in a lot of Samsung devices these days. And the Gear Live uh, made with Android Wear, uh, Android Wear is going to be no exception. So let me go ahead and throw this on real quick. Please excuse my my uh, wristband that I have on right now. That's for the after hours party that is happening later today. And I'm just gonna go ahead and easily just clasp this right onto my wrist. It's very, maybe I'm putting it too tight. There you go. And there you go. So what we have here is the actual device itself. With the screen, we do have a pretty sizable bezel on the, uh, around the screen, but that's not too bad. Uh, it actually doesn't look that bad on my wrist the way the gears did. Um, it is a little bit bigger than your, than your usual watch, but then again, so was the Moto 360, and I give, uh, I give the Gear Live uh, some, some, good, uh, some good points in terms of its design because it's actually not too bad. Uh, the other thing, too, is these wrists, these bands right here can be removed in order for you to uh, put on a standard wristwatch band that you would might want to in order to have a little bit of uh, custom so I'm going to go ahead and just press on the home button right there, and here is the first watch face that is available. I can always go through, and here is the, uh, oops, let's head over here. There is a notification on here. Let me just unmute it. If you bring down from the top, you'll get the date, and you'll also get uh, an ability to mute the phone along with your current battery life. So if I mute, unmute right there. So here is... The first notification that I have on here, um, I didn't have. I, I was. I actually dismissed the uh, text notification that was there. So what we have here is the weather. So weather in London right here, looking to the right, and we have the next four days. So we have a five-day forecast right there. <clears throat> Heading down to the pedometer area, we do have the pedometer that will uh, be able to tell you how many steps that you have walked on this particular day. And of course, the notification for getting home, and also the. Uh, Flight information, this is all information that, like, that comes from pretty much Google now. So you'll be able to use all the information from there in order to get, the, to, get to what you need. And, that uh, and then on here, what we have is a music player. If you swipe to the right, you'll be able to change the track to go next or go previous. So that's what you have there. Play is on one screen, next and previous are on the next couple ones from there. And finally, a calendar entry right here that I just dismissed. And from there, that's what we have. So if we were to head over here, obviously you'll be able to have voice activated searches and whatnot, be able to say something like, okay, Google, and there you go. It comes up right away and goes straight to this particular area, just to set in a reminder by time and location, as it says right there, as this is the demo mode. And there you go. That's pretty much, that pretty much does it for this at least demo portion of the Gear Live. Now, yes, the Gear Live will be available starting today, and you will be able to get your hands on it pretty easily at the Google Play Store. And the Moto 360, along with the LG G Watch, are its competition as they are the first three devices to come with Android Wear as their operating system. So that is the Samsung Gear Live. Stay tuned to Android Authority for all the best coverage, including my coverage of the other two smartwatches. We, I just put up one about the Moto 360, and then tomorrow when I get my hands on my LG G Watch, I'll give you an in-depth review of not only the device itself, but also the operating system. So keep it tuned here. Uh, we are here at Google I.O. 2014. So drop us some likes on our videos and subscribe so you can keep up with all of the great coverage because we are your source for all things Google I.O. We're taking a look at Alcatel's new watch. It's compatible with Android and iOS, and it runs a real-time OS, so it doesn't have app support, but it does have a lot of built-in functionality, like a, a speedometer, an alt altimeter, and has a compass. It also has heart rate monitoring, and uh, it's better than what's found on most Android 
Wear devices since it can actually read it during a workout. It can control your music and receive notifications. And it does a lot of really interesting things like, uh, well, it copies some functionality from Android Wear and that's not bad because it looks pretty nice as a result. It has a few nifty features such as a built-in uh, charger in the strap. It also has NFC support for easy pairing. And the iOS connectivity is quite interesting, but uh, it doesn't mean that it's going to be a better choice. It's going to be a cheaper choice, however, at 149 It's going to come to Canada later this month. And it's slightly smaller than the Moto 360, so take a look. Hi, I'm Kylie Rina, and today we're going to be looking at the Sony Smartwatch 3 to see how you can implement it into your training schedule. To do this, I'm going to be chatting to former Boxing World Champion Carl Frosch to gain an insight into its functionality and how you can train like an athlete. Carl started using the watch one week ago to track his fitness and his training regime. Today we're going to talk to him to find out just how he found the Sony Smartwatch 3. Fantastic to have you here. So obviously you've been training as normal, but last week you had the Sony Smartwatch 3. How did you find it impacted your training? I've absolutely loved the Sony Smartwatch 3. It's, um, it's a gadget, I love my gadgets. Mm -hmm. And um, to be able to just go through my normal week's training and then look back on the week and yeah. monitor exactly what I've done um, with the watch, it's, it's just brilliant. So you've recently retired. How have you found your training from then till now? Yeah, my training changed massively from when I used to compete as an elite athlete. I used to train three, four times a day, where now I'm training probably three, four, sometimes five times a week. Um, and it's just one session a day, so I can enjoy it more. So I'm able to now eat, enjoy my training. And do weights. And do weights, yeah. It's something I've not done much as a, as a professional boxer, and people are surprised by that. What, you don't lift weights. I use my own body as resistance, so things like pull-ups, push-ups, mm -hmm. sit-ups. And I'm working towards different goals as well. I'm now I'm looking at potentially competing in an Ironman. Amazing. And, and if you look at the Ironman and the uh, triathletes, to do a two-mile swim and a 60k bike ride and then maybe a 14-mile 14, 14 run, it gives me some focus in my mind. And there's also big talk of me potentially coming out of retirement. It's always in the back of my mind. So who one knows? To be continued. So how have you been finding using the watch? Yeah, the watch is great. A feature that I really like on the watch is the playlist. So you can instantly access all your music. Without your phone? Without your phone, yeah. You just need your watch and your headphones, your wireless headphones, which is Maybe. perfect. There's nothing flapping around hitting you in the face, which is really annoying when you run. <laughs> um, so I can stick some country and western on because I like a little bit of slow paced music when I'm running it. But if I'm in the gym doing my circuit training, a bit of bad work, even weight, it's nice to have the music on, go in a different genre, so a bit more upbeat music, right. and then pick the pace up when I'm working a bag. Easy. But, no, really, really easy. Oh, cool, sounds amazing. So obviously running's part of your training schedule. How have you been finding it with the smartwatch? Yeah, running and cycling actually is a big part of my training for the cardio. And there's an application called Endomondo. Okay. And all you do is access the Endomondo app, hit play, and it'll monitor your distance and your time, obviously, and also your lap pace. And it's really useful for um, monitoring your training moving forward. Perfect for making improvements. Exactly. Awesome. So would you mind showing me what's on the app? Of course, yeah. All the information from my runs is logged in my phone. And we can see here that I've done a three mile run. But it's a seven minute 55 pace, which is slow by my standards. Okay. Um, I was upset with that, so I went out the, the next day. And you can see there the pace. Well done, much better, 7.23. Seven minutes 23 per mile. So it was a quite a vast improvement. Do do you think because of the app that you saw, how you did previously, that made you do the next one? 100%. The next day I wanted to go out and beat it, which I did. So it certainly sounds like the Endomondo app has everything you need? Definitely. It monitors all my work and all my information okay. perfectly. Um, but on top of that, I did some um, video diaries, some insight on how the week went as well. So take a look at this. I'm ready to go on a quick three mile run. Don't know how quick it'll be because I've not run for a while. But the, um, the sun's shining, so what more can I ask for? I managed to do the three miles in average pace just under eight minute miles about seven minutes 50 per mile which by my standard is pretty poor it's not good enough so my sony smartwatch is telling me that i need to up my game it's not fast enough it's not good enough right yesterday's run wasn't good enough yeah i'm gonna look to do about four miles at seven and a half minute a mile see how i get on so i've just finished a four mile run in just under 30 minutes so i'm really pleased with myself that's just under seven and a half minute mile pace which is great. In fact, I think the comeback is one and truly on. So are there any other apps you're finding useful? Definitely, yeah, the, the weather app's perfect. I don't want to get caught out in the rain, although the watch is water protected. Okay. It's nice to know that I'm going to be safe and the GPS system on there is fantastic. You won't get lost. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So what about the social side of the watch? Yeah, it's great for that. If I'm on the treadmill in the gym, for example, I can keep up to date with my social media. Nice. Um, just using the watch. I don't need to check my phone. On top of that, I can receive and reply to text messages. How oh, easy, so there's no excuses for not getting my messages now. 
as well as um, all the fitness stuff, we've got LifeLog on here, okay. which tells you, for example, how many steps you've done. And you can monitor how many calories you've burnt. Yeah, it's brilliant to be able to review your week, week in, week out. Just monitor everything again. I mean, it tells you everything you need to know about your lifestyle. And then you can make improvements where needed. Exactly. Perfect. In 2016, we have seen a bit of a pivot from smartwatches and more of a focus on fitness trackers. The Huawei Fit is the latest of these wearables to hit the market and is poised to shake things up a bit with its various features at a competitive price point. The Fit features a black and white touchscreen LCD display, which is great for when viewing in direct sunlight as well as offering better battery life when compared to other trackers on the market. Huawei has included an array of sensors to improve their overall experience including a heart rate monitor, accelerometer, gyroscope, ambient light sensor, and a capacitive sensor. As for the actual fitness tracking aspect of the Huawei Fit, there are four different options that help you keep track of your various workouts. The aptly named workout option will allow you to select which type of workout you are performing, whether it's going for a run, a walk around the neighborhood, or even if you're going to do a few laps in the pool. The step counter section displays the number of steps you have taken throughout the day, while also showing the distance traveled, calories burned, and how long you slept the night before. Since the Fit includes a heart rate monitor, there's a section for that as well. From here, you can either measure your heart rate or look at a chart to see your progress over the last few hours. For someone looking to get more from a fitness tracker than the bare bones, Huawei delivers with the Fit. Although the Fit is running a custom software developed by Huawei, you will be able to sync it with your smartphone of choice, allowing for you to see notifications on your wrist even if they aren't actionable. For $129, the Huawei Fit matches up quite nicely against the competition, and once you combine the great battery life, various sensors, and water resistance, the Fit packs a sizable punch. Keep an eye out for more coverage of the Huawei Fit as we spend more time with the latest fitness tracker. Hello guys, TotalLab Pro here, and in this video I'm going to review the Garmin Vivo Smart. First, I just want to say thanks to Brad for having me on his channel. I really like to see some of you over on my channel. The Vivo Smart has a great quality band. The band is a pretty standard watch band that you see on other watches. On the Vivo Smart, you can see what the weather is like, and you can also control your music on your phone. The Vivo Smart is really easy to connect your, to your iPhone because it has built in Bluetooth. The tabs we have got is heart rate, the time, step counts, notifications and a lot more. The menus we got is info and Bluetooth settings and a lot more. One of the special features is that you can read messages on the smart notifications tab. One of the bad things is that you can't answer any messages. The Vivo Smart fits really great on my hand. Sometimes it feels like I don't have it on. It's so comfy. I use regular exercise on this watch. So the app. First, we have an all-around tab for everything on your day. And then we got steps, the sleep counter, running, and then your activity minutes. We also got the calendar to show you how your days have been in this month. And then we have settings where you can change anything when you watch and the app. Research shows that guided deep breathing can help you reduce stress and anxiety, and even lower blood pressure. And with guided breathing sessions based on your heart rate, Charge 2 makes it easy to find moments of calm throughout your day. The Relax experience on Charge 2 features deep breathing sessions that are on demand and personalized based on your heart rate. Charge 2 uses your real-time heart rate to determine your breathing rate. By doing this, we make the session personalized to you which helps ensure you get the benefit of deep breathing. To get started, press the button on your tracker until you reach relax. From there, tap the bottom of the display to choose a two or five minute session. Once you've picked your session length, 
Press and hold the button until you feel a vibration. Then your session begins. First, breathe slowly and deeply. Charge 2 will sense your breathing and will display a wave that mirrors the rhythm of your breathing based on your heart rate. After Charge 2 detects your personalized breathing rate, you'll feel a light vibration and will move on to the guided portion of the experience. From there, follow the circular guide as it encourages you to inhale and exhale. The better you follow the guide, the more small sparkles you'll see on screen. When the session is complete, you'll feel another light vibration and see a celebratory message. Whether you're in a moment of stress or just want to take a moment to find calm, Charge 2 helps you take time to breathe and bring more relaxation to your routine.